which way? I'll sit here, you sit oh, there. Better. <laughs> Tommy O'Donnell, everybody. Isn't he marvelous? I'm going to say through the years, uh, Tommy um, received an injury to his vocal cord, and we'll be doing more in-depth conversations with everyone at Jazz 88. This becomes a radio documentary, which will be played sometime over the summer, and we'll really, really, really get into the depths of what moved people to not only get into this music, but also to stay in it and what changes they've experienced and some of their highlights, and also what they could tell an up-and-coming jazz artist. But right now, this is about you, and I um, want to tell you that, first of all, you are revered in this town. You are one of the most marvelous piano players ever. Yeah, um, Tommy, I know that you love Errol Garner. You've done some shows devoted to the style of Errol Garner. And when you were quite young, you were at the University of Minnesota at 18 years old, and Errol's band came in to do a show. Was it at the Downbeat? And they said, the band said something about you, I hear you play like Errol Garner, would you play? Is that kind of what happened? And did you go down and play for Errol? Go ahead, use your I, I did, that's true, yeah. And uh, I played with this rhythm section, His at, rhythm section. At, at Kaufman Memorial during rehearsal in preparation for Errol's concert that night. So Errol and I became good friends. And I considered him to be probably the best pianist that's ever lived, period. Okay. You know? And people should listen to him. You know? When you... Um I, did, I think his brother even said you're the only one who sounds just like Errol Garner. His brother thinks that your playing is amazing. I believe that's what the quote said. We were also talking about when you were at a place called the Downbeat. We were talking about you at another place called Herb's Bar. And you played with many, many stars that came through at Herb's Bar. Can you name a few of them? Uh, I played with Chet Baker uh, out at the... Uh, Lake, at Lakeview, it was called. Oh, it was actually. Lakeview, yeah, okay. Lakeview at uh, Lake Minnetonka. And then I went to Herb's and I played with uh, Toots the Omens and Jackie McLean and Johnny Griffin and uh, many more. What age were you? I was about 19. <laughs> oh, just 19. Oh, man. Anyway, then you left town, went to the West Coast for a little while, came back. And you were a mainstay in the nightclubs and the restaurants. Um, you were a part of a group called Natural Life for a little while. Is that true? Yeah, I did start. Actually, I started it. You did? I did start it. Okay. I was reading and Joined at the Hip. It's a great book on the history of Minnesota jazz, Joined at the Hip. So you can look it up. It's either on Kindle or a paperback. Um, but it talks about how you were in the beginning of this incredible group with Mike Elliott, Bobby Rockwell... And, and your brother, Billy Peterson. And, yeah. And uh, who was on drums at uh, that point? Bill Berg. Bill Berg was on drums at and the time. Was the original band, and then I was offered a steady job with Irv Williams at the top of the hill, and I gave the job to Bobby Peterson. Okay. Who really took it over and did a lot of marvelous things with the band. Do you, you remember know? the uh, top, the carousel at the top of the Hilton on Kellogg Avenue? And uh, I don't quite remember what they call that, Continental now or something. But the Carousel was the name, and Irv Williams was there, what, six nights a week for years and years? 70 years. Yes. Please. And uh, you joined him there. Were you there the whole time? I was there for about four years with Mike Elliott. And with Mike Elliott. Jack Bertelson. Oh, Jack, sure. And uh, played organ some of the time. You played organ some of the time. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> You're getting stage directed yeah, from... Right, yeah, I played uh, organ at, at a lot of times at okay. the... Uh... All right. Um, before we go on here, I just wonder if you were to name a highlight in your life here in our Twin Cities in particular, did you have a favorite club that you worked that you still shake your head at how fun it was or how cool it was? I think it was still Herbs when it, was, when it existed. Because uh, uh, 
it was always packed. And unfortunately, we, we don't have, we've got one room like that now up at Crooners. Right. Crooners up north. Right. Yep. So, Where you're doing your Errol Garner show sometimes, yeah, am, right? Am, yeah. At Crooners in the Dunsmore too. Room. If you haven't been there, it's a beautiful facility. Great room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay, so Herb's Bar. What year are we talking? Was that the 50s, 60s? 59. 59. Yeah. And who was with you? Probably uh, George Avalos. You've had him on your show. Yes, I have had him. Uh, he's a jazz and, legend, uh, too. Uh, Denny Burgess was a, a really fine bass player. Denny Burgess. It's not a name I know. but yeah, And uh, uh, let's see. Stu, Stu Anderson played bass. Stu Anderson. Okay. But uh, it, it was it was loaded with fun, and like I said, it was always packed. What's coming up next for you, where people can come and hear you? I'll be up at the uh, Crooners. You will another in, show up at Crooners in, in the Dunsmore room. And you have what month? Uh, the big, uh, the small room with the nine. Yep, the, yep, the nine, the Dunsmore room. It's called with uh, Gordy Johnson and uh, probably Alden Akia. Oh, Alden Akia, okay. On drums. Yeah. When might that be? Uh, I think it's coming up in about two months. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. So, can I tell them you had a birthday this winter? I did. I did. And March 3rd. Uh, March 3rd, will yeah. you tell them? How old are you? I, I can't remember. Okay, <laughs> that's a great answer. He sounds like my mom. <laughs> Would you do another song for us? I will, I will. Okay, Tommy O'Donnell, everybody. Thank you. 